Welcome to the Free Agent Real Estate Investing Podcast. I'm your host, Stratton Brown. And I'm your other host, Michael Butler. Guys, what's up? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Today, we've got a couple topics we'll cover. What was it? How to set, expect, set expectations with new employees was a big one. How to fire people properly. Um, balancing out your family and life. And then building a business around your life, not a life around your business. Are the things that at least I'd like to cover and that have come into my life recently of having to put my phone away even earlier and forcing those time constraints on myself. But before we do, go to callmagicians.com if you're looking for any type of virtual assistant for any menial task or even really, really, really big task that you don't feel like doing. We have the best trained outsourced staff in the world. You got anything, Mike? Yeah, man. As for me, again, if you guys are looking to comp your properties like a pro, right? Analyze the deals, um, pull lists, skip trace, even send uh, direct mail postcards. Uh, make sure you guys go to mainlinecomps.com. Again, that's PropStream. You'll be able to get a seven-day free trial. We use it every day in our business. Um, and again, I mean, it, it saves me day in and day out when it comes to uh, getting pro being able to make appropriate offers on property. So again, that's mainlinecomps.com, mainlinecomps.com. And then, oh, if you guys need a transaction coordinator, we, we got to make a, um, what's it called, affiliate for this. But use constantclose.com. Rochelle, it's Rochelle Jarvis's company. And we bought, my partner and I bought three rentals in three months last year, all creative finance, and she handled all of it. All the paperwork, all of knowing how to do everything. And I, she just started that company, and it's been, she's a lifesaver. So constantclose.com. I remember a deal that we were doing that was actually pretty, pretty crazy that she was working in. And man, she's, she's phenomenal, bro. She's awesome. Like she handled it all. She knew, I don't, I don't know anything about creative finance. I just know if it's like, okay, I'll call Rochelle. Is this possible? She'll make you ask possible. Does she only do creative finance? She does it all. So she handles okay. regular transactions for people as well. I would highly recommend that guys, just because. Um, if you're a solo panure, uh, right, you, you're handling your business or the day to day um, operations of your business still uh, solo um, when it comes to be, uh, um, you know, dealing with title companies and stuff like that, it'll really slow you down when it comes to marketing um, and, and building up that pipeline. So just to be able to pass a, a lead or a, di a deal, right, it's already in escrow and stuff yeah. like that, just to be able to pass that off to someone who knows exactly what they're doing. Their only task is to follow up with these people every day. Get them the documentation, follow up with buyers, stuff like that. It'll save you a bunch of time. And in the back end, you, you'll make a lot more money. Well, and it's by the file, dude. And I mean, we mm -hmm. can go on this tangent and um, it doesn't even have to be to plug Rochelle. But you as you're growing, you're going to start to see you start working on deals and then you stop the marketing and then you have to start the marketing. Right. Like, right. Because you don't have any systems in place or any employees in place to really push that forward. And where I see a lot of people go wrong is like they want to just skim on like just get an assistant dude and train them up to do that and it'll help you out significantly all right so you could go get a virtual assistant who wants to they can handle your escrows do all of your administrative stuff and cold call still yep. like you can train someone to do all of that for you and then that way you can just worry about following up with all your hot leads and doing everything else and just keep on pushing keep pushing baby because i mean how many how you ran into it what's it called Last year with the coach um, stopping your marketing because you were a solo. Yes. Dude, right? Yes. And guys, give me a, a, give me a few seconds. I'll make sure I'm getting this into our groups, our local groups, just to make sure everybody has the opportunity to get in here with us. Right. But um, I've run into it right where, OK, we're really, really busy on the transaction side. We're pushing to get all these things across the finish line and then we get everything across the finish line. OK, we made a lot of money, but then like there's no more money coming in. Yeah. So, yeah, we were a um, we dealt with it. Yeah. Like you said, last year, man, because, um, again, I didn't have my team built out and stuff like that. And so a lot of it was on me and um, just trying to get the rest of the deals uh, through the through the finish line and slow down my marketing. Um, it seemed like we were doing great business towards the end of the year. Um, January, February starts hitting. And, and next, thing you know, there's nothing in the pipeline. And it's like we started all over again. Yeah. I mean, and then. There's nothing worse than having nothing in the pipeline, dude. No. And like the droughts are going to come, but if you can prevent it and at least have something come in and have some type of income, 
mm-hmm. to where you see a lot of people just straight up jump in and back. Like, oh, you know what? I'm going 100 percent into wholesale. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I I never recommend it. I really don't like. I know you need to burn the boats, but you need to play it smart. And we turn away clients all the time who are like new people, and like, mm-hmm. well, I can afford you. I have this much in my savings account. And like, nah, bro, nah, bro. <laughs> You shit ain't gets there scary real quick. Shit gets it, scary real shit quick. Shit gets scary real quick when you got to start <laughs> writing checks for marketing instead of fucking gas money. Like that's not what you want, right? So you want to have something else coming in paying for that. And yeah. I know everybody wants to make it look pretty like, oh, I'm a full-time entrepreneur, blah, blah, blah. Dudes yeah. will take on three jobs just to get their own business off the ground. Like don't let you need to tell you something different. Right. You need to. And, and, the, and, you know, the gurus who will tell you something like that. Um, I mean, obviously, they've done the business at some point and they have multiple streams of income. So um, even if their wholesale business isn't doing great mentoring and coaching and stuff like that, most of these guys have their own coaching programs and you know stuff like that. So you're, you're essentially you're keeping their, their businesses alive even when they're not thriving themselves. Right. Well, and I mean, I just don't think you need to put yourself in that type of a situation. Having been there. Of like, Jesus Christ, bro. Okay. What are we going to do? What do we have to go sell to make sure we can pay rent? To where I was too stubborn to go get a job. And then I eventually had to go get a job. And I could use all of that money from that instead of only relying on my business and killing Mm -hmm. my business. Right? Having to take checks out of my business instead of letting that grow my business. Yep. I'm suffocating my business. And that's something that a lot of people don't see. What Tyree saying uh, in Fast and the Furious he was like, you either going to do this or whatever it may be. He was like, or you can take your ass back to Barstow. He was like, I ain't going back to Barstow. Bro, I ain't going back to Barstow. <laughs> I ain't going back to Barstow. <laughs> I started, well, I, uh, what's it called? We started just saying we're never driving to Utah again. Like, we're only buying plane tickets. Yeah. Even though I don't know it's, why you're driving anyway. Because it's, um, what's it called? It's like 600 bucks a pop, right? That's so, a lot of money. A lot of money to drop for a family. It's, it's subjective. Right. Well, I mean, when we're going three <laughs> times a month, it's subjective. Yeah. But when you're going three times a month, they have fuck, bro. Yeah, it can add up. But hey, if it's if it, if you're if you're making money while you're there, then it doesn't matter. A trip could pay for itself. Well, what I ran into, bro, was the amount of time I would lose by driving. Drive. For sure, you said by driving. How, how much? How long was the drive? The drive is eleven hours. Oh hell right? no! So it takes eleven. So it's eleven hours. We'll go to St. George. Probably pit stop, rest there. So that's one day. Yeah, then you got to drive from the drive. Drive another four hours to get there. So yeah. that that next day, I get a half day. Okay, that day's fucking gone because your mornings are really where all your pro- productivity is. That day's gone, and so that's two days to get there. Uh-uh. We'll stay for like let's say we stay for a week, and then it's another two days to get home. And then I got to recover, like from the drive <laughs> home for another day. So that's another day. So it takes me five days of travel. Just to get home, in all reality, to where I was like, no, okay, bro. bro. If I'm if I if I'm gonna drive somewhere, it's it's because it's it's like a it's like a family vacation. We're gonna be there for like a week, right? We're we're enjoying the time in the car together, like all those little things. But shit, I made the decision a long time ago. Even even when going to Vegas, bro, I, I won't drive to Vegas because by the time you get to Vegas, bro, I'm not I'm not as young as you know. I'm not 21, 22 no more. So I'm not getting there full of life, bro. At that 30, 31 years old. By the time I get there, I'm probably going to need to take a nap, right? I'm losing out on a full ass day of being in Vegas. So I told myself that, bro, I'll drive. What is it? I will. I have to hours. fly. Six. Bro, but I, I mean, the ticket fly. to Vegas, again, like, to where it's, it's yeah. 100 bucks. That ain't shit. Bro, fuck it. That ain't shit. Well, my next You know what I'm saying? Or like, I'll fight. drive there, but I won't drive back. Yeah. Because the drive back is real. <laughs> No. Hey okay. guys, what's up? It's uh, we see you guys up in here. Go ahead and drop a comment, guys. Where are you guys from? Where you at, Aaron? Where's your name down there. Where are you, Aaron? Where are you? I know, I know Aaron's in there. Um, I know Brad's in here too. Go ahead and drop. Go, go ahead and drop a comment for us so we can interact with you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in with us, man. This is this has been fun. This is I'm we're really enjoying this. Um, we're about to hit April, bro. So obviously we're going to be bringing somebody on this month. We've made a conscious effort to make sure that we bring at least one guest on a month. Um, I don't know if we spoke to that person about it yet. No, nah, I'll send him a text. No. Okay. So yeah, we got someone lined up for you guys, man. We're excited to bring this person on. It's going to be a ton of uh, value for you guys. Um, 
Yeah, man. Hopefully they say yes. No reason why they really shouldn't, but we'll see. <laughs> so what you been up to, man? Um, so I'm back from that self storage mastermind. The thing was yep. dope. Yeah. Um, what's it called? Whoever this is, please put your name down and just says, "Hey guys, what's going on?" Whoever you are. What up, Jimmy? What's going Central on, Jimmy? Crawl daddies. Crawl daddies. What's that? Central Valley Crawl Daddies by Celia? I don't know. My name's Strat Daddy. <laughs> he said, "Oh, he said not Crawl Daddies." I mean, I love Crawl Dads. I don't know what that is. You don't know what a crawdad is? You never had crawfish? No. I mean, I've had crawfish. I didn't know that's, that's, a, that's another name for him. No. Okay. Um. Well, but the self storage mastermind, bro. It, it was dope. Um, a lot of really, really high level people, and then it just meant a lot of these guys are in a mastermind called Life and Air. Uh huh. And if you guys have ever, um, it's a book. I wasn't a fan. What's going on, Yo, Dino? What up, Dean? What's going on, Dino? Um, boy. Life and air is about just creating a life, and they're not really big on debt, right? So a lot of these dudes in the mastermind were buying all these storage facility facilities and straight cash. Oh man, like really, really big facilities, and just raising the money and buying it cash and calling it a day because one of them had been taken out in like oh eight. He's like, bro, a bank called a two million dollar loan on me, and I had no reserves to do it so i was shit out of luck it's like i'm never doing that shit again did he take it over uh creatively how they call the note due if, if it was his i note? didn't i didn't even ask i didn't even ask i'll ask him um next time i see him but like it so was when a mortgage buying a straight, but when you say buying a straight cash so it, you said raising money so they're buying it so they there is debt i feel like that's kind of a um but it's so, so there is debt but it's only them and their investors there are no banks yeah okay so that's 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 kind of where i was confused because i'm like if you know they're saying it, they're all about no debt but technically you still have debt because you're getting their private money right but at least they're like a steward and then they split the cash flow with their investors 50 50. so it makes sense so it makes sense for them right to mm -hmm. fork up that much cash yeah. um, a lot of them were just really big on structuring their life the way they want it they want it to be and Again, knowing how much cash you really need and how much money you want and what you want mm -hmm. your life to look like. And one of the guys stood up and he was like, all right, I need 30K a month. I need 30K a month to live. And I know mm -hmm. I'm going to sell two facilities a year like that they buy and like renovate. And let's say they flip them. He's like, I'll make 400K off of that. And 30K okay. a month, but I'm, I don't need anything else. Yeah, but that's a lot of money, man. That's a lot right, of money. He, he was like, I don't need to push to go even farther. He stepped out of his flipping business and everything else. He's like, bro, I don't need it. And he's yeah. like, it, it gives me the peace of mind. And I talked to him and he, he's, he was a coach. And he's like, I talk to my students and there's mm -hmm. nothing else I do. And I love my life. And he's like, it's stress-free. I don't have yeah. to worry about anything. You know, it's funny. All because... of these tenants don't pay, bro. That's yeah. He's like, it's okay. It's just yeah. money sitting there, but we're not having to pay a bank. Yeah, it's nice when it comes. Um, it's funny because when you talk about what your life, what you want your life to look like or, you know, how much you feel like you'd be comfortable with and, and you know, things like that. I almost feel like uh, getting into real estate and stuff like that. I, I never really knew. You know, I think, you know, when I was teaching, bro, I was probably making, you know, without it, without my credential, I was level zero. I was probably bringing home. 30, I was teaching, I was teaching, and then I was doing adult school. So I was bringing in about thirty four, thirty five hundred dollars a month. Okay. Right? And so, and at the time you feel like you were pretty comfortable. I mean, we didn't have, you know, a lot of needs and, you know, wants for the most part, we we're pretty, you know, we we're pretty comfortable, but I was working all the time. And so now obviously we make more than what we were, what I was doing as a teacher. Um, and I'm in a good place, bro. I like, I, I definitely would say I'm in a good place. I def, you know, and you have aspirations for a whole lot more, but if something was, if it was just to stay kind of where it's at, I mean, I'm pretty, pretty happy where I'm at. You know what I mean? I get to spend time with my family where I work three hours a day. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I definitely get that. I think you definitely have to start to grow into something and then um, kind of what you want your life to be will kind of present itself. Once you start living a certain way, you're like, you know what? I, I, I can do this for a while. And then he, he structured his businesses to be, He's like, I don't want to work, bro. I only want to do what's in my unique ability. He's like, I'm, yeah. I'm allergic to work, is what he says. I'm allergic <laughs> to work. So yeah. he's like, I underwrite deals. That's okay. all I do. 
He's like, I have a partner who does all the lead generation and I have boots yeah. on the ground for everything else. All I do, yeah. do is talk to my students and I underwrite deals. And he's like, if we, if me and my partners ever get in, in they're all his friends. He's like, if we ever get in a situation where it's a knockout, drag out fight, I'll walk away. You can have it all. It's not worth my peace of mind. It's not worth this peace of mind. It would do. And that's huge. Like just, just peace of mind. Like that, that shit goes a long way. Um, you guys who are, are who are here right now, go ahead and drop in the comments what your ideal life looks like, right? If you if you um, whether it's investing, no matter what it is, how much do you think it would take for you? Um, how much do you think you would need to make a month for you to feel like you know I can live the rest of my life doing the things that I want to do, um, traveling, whether it be traveling. What what does what does that perfect life look like for you? Say hi, mom. What's up? Say hi. Say hi, mom. You're on my podcast. I love you, mom. Love you. I'll call so, you afterwards. Oh. <laughs> that awkward moment, huh? Oh. Yeah, I mean, and then again, bro, I still don't know really what I want. I know where we need to be at, at least to live the lifestyle we are, but I... Yeah. I So I drank for the first time in forever, right? So we're all sitting out at a bar, uh-huh. and I'm low-key lit. And I'm just like, I, I don't <laughs> No, bro. You did 75 hard. You're, you're real late. Right. Well, and it's like a lot of them, like the life and air stuff low key sounds like I'm settling and like not striving because like they yeah. get to a point and they're happy with it. And that's just not the way I like my mind works. Right. I'm like, oh, OK, what's yeah. the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next yeah. thing? It's a really hard thing to turn off. And my big thing was like, bro, I don't I need to take I'm only 26. I need to take as much advantage of where I am now to where I know I have a fat ass fucking ego and that's something that'll drive me and it'll, it'll go away at a point in time. And I 100% ego wise, I want to know what it feels like to have a jet, nothing else, nothing more. (laughs) And I was like, and I need, and I, so I want to get there. Right. I was like, well, what does that feel like? I'm really truly interested. And I talked to Jason about this. He was like, bro, I want to know what it is like to have that much coming in. And then what yeah. my next moves are. Yeah. Like what else is possible if I can do that? I wouldn't even take it as settling. Like, like how they said that they're happy. You mentioned your guy. He was saying that, you know, he underwrites deals. He still has his students. So they're still making a, a, a lot of money. The thing is, it's just a whole lot. Not easier. money. Not money. I'm not saying settling money wise. I'm just yeah, saying- but settling business wise. Because uh, yeah. as, as you grow and you make more money, you're allowed to you almost you you free up your time money buys you back not buy it buys you back your time so you can still continue to strive and not feel like you're doing anything and that's what i'm saying that's kind of what this year has been for me i don't work as much but my business still goes so it it may you know deep down i might feel like damn i ain't doing much but then i go ahead and i look through my crm and stuff like that stuff is still happening you know what i mean it's the, bro. It's my constant battle, right? Bringing on the partner for the wholesale business, and so now I have a I have a fifteen minute call for our call center every yeah. morning, and then I'll talk to a couple new clients a day. But besides that, dude, I'm just sitting here just thinking, right? Thinking. To where I'm thinking, yeah. and then spending time with my kid. To where it's not, um, it's hard. I don't know. It's hard for me to unwind. It's hard for me to like now. It's like okay, well, I need to triple down on my call center. What's going on? It's my pit bull, y'all. It's my little pit bull, the Sibe. You guys hear in the back, just running around in the back, all on my leg, trying to get me to pick her up. All right, Jimmy. <laughs> so your goal is 12K a month. Awesome, bro. Okay. And then currently bringing in 6K as a data scientist, but I work 10 to 12 hours a day. So ultimately, I'm left Ooh. tired after the day to enjoy. Yeah, that's hard, bro. It's a lot yeah, of hours. That's tough. It's tough. As a data scientist, what, what exactly is a, da- a data? They dig it in the data and analyzing it almost like a data analyst send send me a pm i may need to talk to you <laughs> i could use you sound bias peace of mind and purpose building a business with longevity yes 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 it's funny that you talk about longevity we uh here in southeast fresno we've had a a, a business um freaking phenomenal man uh sunnyside D- uh, deli they were open for 40 years it's kind of like the spot man you go grab lunch you go to sunnyside deli and they posted on Facebook, um, I think, you know, earlier this week, they posted on Facebook that they're going to be closing their doors after 40 years. Because of COVID. No. And I thought that was the dopest thing about it. It was just a decision that they've made. 
You know what I mean? Like you talk about longevity, like how dope is that to start a business and think about where you would have to be when it comes to peace of mind, purpose, right? And just building that business out. Think about where you would have to be to be able to sit down and just be like, you know what? Let's just close our doors. Like we're, we're in a place in our life where we've, you know, where we've made it. The rest of our life, we will be okay. Right. You know what I mean? Like that. You're not working for money anymore. You're not working for money no more. And I think that's the biggest thing when, when we talk about buying back your time and building out these businesses and legacy and all these things is to be able to have money buys you the gets you the ability to make those decisions. Be able to step away and no longer do things for money, right? You you start living with a different purpose. I think that I thought that was phenomenal when I, you know, it sucks for us in Southeast Fresno to no longer have Deli Deli, uh, Deli Delicious, Sunnyside Deli, but you know, I mean, like, round of applause for them. What, bro? So, what's the what's the quote? If you have money, you don't have a problem, right? <laughs> and I'm talking to my fucking mentor the other day, telling him like, well, I want to do this, but I don't know about this. And he's like, you're you're thinking way too hard, bro. Call your yeah. fucking attorney, write him a check to solve that problem for you, and then keep thinking about other things. He's like, you're worried about too much Mickey Mouse decision making. You just need to. I was like, oh, fuck. Right. But like, that's what he said. And you're right. If you have money, you don't have problems. Mickey At least Mouse some problems. Decisions. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then like a, hey, son. <laughs> hey, son. Oh, man. What's up, Carlos? What's up, Carlos? Carlos they just did. Um, towards that. They just, is, uh, they just pushed out their first flip. Oh man, that's awesome, right? Oh yeah. He's actually coming over to my house tomorrow to um part of our anniversary gift for you know my wife was touching uh adding some more storage to our kitchen and stuff like that. So Carlos is gonna come knock out that job for us. Um he's actually gonna um do a, a garage conversion at one of our Airbnbs. Um yeah, man, we we talk a lot about uh to, to Carlos as as we as, as you know, you got everyone knows Carlos. And we start talking about he has a lot of stuff going on. And I and one of the things we've had discussions about is that man, you need to you need to start building a team because yep. it's getting to a point where he's almost having to turn down some jobs just because you know he doesn't have enough people on his team. And so um that's definitely what's next for him. I'm excited to see him grow him, him and his wife, him and his wife, Hello. Martha. Drop your Instagram and phone number in here for people to reach out to you for work. If anybody sure, yeah. Them, if you guys need need any type of work done in your home man he's he's phenomenal finishes excellent i know you do i know they do great work when my wife loves it because my wife is she's very detail oriented and she she has no complaints <laughs> and he did um what's it called he worked on one of mine kyle's creative finance deals the one the one okay. off of um thing lyle oh that's right you, you did say he worked on lyle yeah man he's freaking awesome man i highly encourage you guys to, to, to reach out to carlos um and when everyone reaches out to you, Carlos, you make sure that that, that my job still be still still stay a, a priority, man. <laughs> don't don't little, don't little bro me, don't little bro me. And but this goes into like build it. You don't want to. What's the word? What's what Don told you? Don't scale to insanity because then yeah, you just he create said, more he and more and more problems for yourself. It stuck out to me so much, man, because I, going into the year, that's kind of where I was at. I, I hadn't moved so fast. I haven't moved fast enough. But at the same time, like I knew I needed to uh, make some additions to my team because I was still, you know, using a lot of my time. And, you know, coming from an OG, he was just like, don't scale. He said, don't scale so fast to the point that you drive yourself crazy or, or something like that. Scale don't to insanity. Because yeah, like you much. just create more and more and more problems, more problems. and a lot of these, steady. and bro, you start living paycheck to paycheck because you are yes. pushing everything back into it, right? And you're spending so much money that you're almost stressing yourself out because you done hired three new people, you done got into four different, four new markets, right? Payroll. And you're doing all this stuff, huh? Payroll, and then yeah, you don't payroll. even know what your KPIs are. Exactly. So now at that point, you done scaled so fast that you can't even control it and you're going to be spending money out your ass. And then the next thing you're going to have to do is throttle that shit down. And it was all pointless. Yep. Right. So you don't want to scale yourself to insanity. There we go. CMG services on Facebook and Instagram. 
Make sure you guys go ahead and follow Martha and Carlos uh, on face on Facebook and Instagram. I would highly suggest more Instagram just because you're able to see pictures of the work that they do. Man, awesome family, man. I believe they got like five kids. They're all in on the business. Like it's freaking awesome, man. I love it. And then hashtag FresnoHandyman.com. That's right. Let's go back up here with Jimmy. Jimmy had mentioned something. A data scientist discovers knowledge from data using statistics, algorithms, and visual uh, visual vi visualization techniques. I would use some of the twelve thousand to fund my PhD in data science. I already have master's degree in it, trying to bless the world with insight. Man, that sounds like some complicated shit. That's all on it, bro. I'm so glad you read that. I'd be having to read stuff from the fun. And I just, oh damn, bro. That's awesome, bro. Like I. Kudos to you, bro. Real estate's gonna be easy. Real estate yeah. is what real estate <laughs> is the um there's a lot of stupid people in real estate, let's say that, who make a lot of money to where do, do either of you uh utilize any automation for scaling or do you rely on other people to do the uh manual work? Um automation um in wholesaling, in wholesaling, I would say. Shoot, I don't know what, what what's really automated in uh, maybe gener uh, generating contracts. So right? if I can't automate it, then I delegate it. Yeah. That's the way you got to think about it. So, so what I, would you say in wholesaling that we're automating? Um, a lot. You can so you can automate a lot of your follow ups with certain CRMs. Yes. And then yes drips and stuff like that. Drips and stuff like that. Automate contracts. What else is automated? You can we're working on bots to like go pull County records and do some list scrubbing and stuff like that. Man. But after that, you just have to start delegating. And so yeah. I'd say delegate, I will automate until I absolutely have nothing left to do. And then we have to delegate. And then we have a system in place of SOPs and everything else that that person can follow. Uh -huh. and, and one thing I would say, that. Jimmy, is uh, with you being in the Central Valley, I know a lot of us, when we do look to automate some things, we do have to go to other people throughout the country and stuff like that. Um, I definitely think if you were able to build out something that that helps with those drip campaigns, that helps with pulling data from the county, um, you know, whether that be probate, whatever that may be. I mean, your your uh, um, your niche is 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 a need in our industry for sure locally, right? And I think that's how it starts. I mean, you become a superstar in your in your in your market, man, and then from that point, I think you you can. You can do some great things. Well, I mean, let's go. so Investor Lift, they're a dispo app that works really well to where Nick Perry told me to use it. I think Dean started using it and a couple of other really, really big nationwide people are using it. Yeah, they did seven figures in their first three months. Their third month, they did seven figures in a month because of the amount of value that they brought to the community. Mm -hmm. Right. So they saw, need in, they saw a need in the market and they brought it to fruition. And then here you go. Like that's all business is, is identifying a need in the market. And so if yeah, you do, of, go ahead, bro. I would say when it comes to automation and stuff like that, um, like buyers, right? Buyers is one thing that it, it's hard work to find, find buyers. And if you were able to come up with something that literally pulled the public data whenever a, per, a property was purchased cash, right? And it pulled those buyers <laughs> and you were able to sell that information. I mean, that people would pay for that because I think right now, you're pretty much just keeping track on, you know, you know, you're going on prop stream and places like that, seeing what's being sold and then looking at who the buyer was, if it was a cash purchase. Right. And, and, and we're adding those people to our list now. So if you're able to fix that problem, that would be that would be a good little niche, too. What's another one? The likelihood of a seller who's going to sell to where there's some companies out there who will charge you seventy thousand dollars a year to give you a list of people who are likely to sell within the next 90 days all based off of data science. Uh, and people would pay uh, for that. Oh, people pay for it all the time. People would pay and, for that. And so it's something you can go into. And I know several people who use them who are very successful and mm -hmm. they have obviously their back end data science, but that's something you could do. Like there's so many different niches. You could go into anything you want, right? Because now this is where we're all at, at least in businesses. I need to know data where I can automate it. Uh -huh. And I will pay a lot of money to get that shit automated. Or if it'll make me more money, like, no, this is what you'll pay. This is what you'll make. Fuck uh -huh. yeah, let's go. Because some of these things are, if, especially if you can get it as close to a certainty as possible, right? If you're if you're feeding someone 100 leads 
of people who are 90 to 90, you know, 80 to 100 percent chance of selling. And you it's know, not a pre foreclosure, but it's like, not a like, you know what? they have yeah. bad credit. Someone just died. And like you narrow it down like they're, they'd go off of a ton of different statistics. Right. And this is a percentage of uh, these people selling and you charge seventy thousand dollars for a hundred people on this list with a highly po high possibility of selling with the average wholesale fee being ten to fifteen thousand dollars. I mean, you you guys do the math. Even if it was ten thousand dollars, that's a hundred grand. Someone will pay seventy grand to yep. make a hundred grand. Exactly. Okay. And then for uh, again, for, uh, well, we stick to the automation in the Airbnb side, right? A lot of that is automation. So you talk about when someone goes. Right now, we have our pricing automated, right? We go ahead and we put in um, our base, our base daily rate. And we put in our bottom number. And then from that, based on seasonality, percentages of other properties in the area that's similar to yours, what they're booking at and stuff like that, it literally, uh, I use beyond pricing and it literally ups and downs my price and it messes with the algorithm on Airbnb because it looks like I'm constantly adjusting my prices, which means my listing is going to continue to be, you know, on the top when people go ahead and search in, in our Fresno market. And I'm not having to do that, whereas that's a lot of manpower when you have to go in daily and adjust that and, you know, do that research. Um, and then when someone does inquire to book, um, I believe it's uh, Smart B&B. We send automated messages, basically asking them to look at our house, house rules, stuff like that. Someone checks in, sends them a message. Thank you for booking. You know, thank you for booking with us. You know, all the all these little messages and stuff like that. All that is is 100 percent automated. And then like um, as you're thinking about building that life, right, you could bring in just a partner, mm -hmm. just bring in a partner who handles all the shit you hate. And then it doesn't even feel like work anymore. Bro, he's basically a um, um, rocket fuel. Yeah. A I visionary, mean, a visionary and an um, integrator. integrator, basically an integrator. And I'm going to tell you now, integrators are dime a dozens. <laughs> they are not a dime a dozen. They are impossible to find. <laughs> I'm are, like juiced having you on here because I'm like shit. Whew. They are so hard to find, right? Because you have visionaries with their heads up in the fucking clouds and they're going to come up with 30 ideas and one of them is going to be really good. Mm -hmm. And then you got to have someone who knows the processes and how to implement it and how to make sure everything's in check and like, hey bro, we can't do that shit. Like, yeah. Slow down, bud. They talk about all these people when it comes to Ford and they talk to McDonald's and all these things. Everyone knows that the head or the face of those organizations, but they're really ran by the by the integrators in the back end. Bro, there's two people. Like if you look at all these companies, I don't know about Amazon. Yeah. But like with McDonald's, Walmart, Apple, Microsoft, there's two people. Mm -hmm. Right. And like you see the trend of like two people handling it. It's really, really hard when you get to that scale unless you have some amazing COO to mm -hmm. do that type of stuff for you for sure and it does sound like you need to make a little bit more than 6k but 100 <laughs> percent, a little bit more than 6k and of course bro thank you so much for tuning in what was our next topic we had you said that you were going to talk about i don't know well i, I need to push record on i'm going to facetime um cletus and see where he's at. <laughs> why? Why isn't he on our stream? Um, right. So I know some of you guys who are on here, you're probably wondering why we're going live to, uh, on a Wednesday. Um, that is definitely my fault. As you guys know, I coach uh, high school varsity football, and um, we we have a five game season this year, and two of our games are on a Thursday. Kickoff is typically around six thirty, seven o'clock, which would, you know, tomorrow, which would be our podcasting time. Um, the first week or two weeks ago, we weren't, um, honestly, it, it, it didn't, it, it, I just didn't think about it. And you hit me up probably what Wednesday, like, Hey, what time, you know, what do you want to talk about on the podcast? And I'm like, Oh man, I got a game tomorrow. Right. And at that time you were already leaving the Utah. Um, where you at? Bro? So man, where you at? Outside. We've been waiting. Uh, on why you ain't? Yeah. Why are you waiting ain't for your comments? Podcast? Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll get my wife and we'll get on right now. Are you, at an, are you at an appointment right now? No, he's not at an appointment. We just oh, missed okay. our people who always tune in, Cletus. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm glad you Thanks, did that because we've already talked about people about who we wanted on here. 
And so then what I'm going to do is just put them on blast and get a yes out of them on on, on, our, on our on the podcast. Okay. How dope would that be? See if we can get them live. Let's see if he answers. Are you calling him? No. Oh. <laughs> I know he's in here. <laughs> no answer. All right. He's putting the kids to bed. Um, he probably is. No, I believe him. Uh, so how to deal with deal slumps, I think is something that we could cover to where yeah. um What's it called? And this isn't sales, any business that you're really doing, bro. This shit happens to everybody. Mm -hmm. One thing that I will do is I will go back through my entire CRM. Like I know, I know there's money in there. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm ever going through a slump, I will you got a little bit low. You got a little low. That better? Yeah, it's way better. There we go. If I'm ever going through a slump, I will go through my entire CRM or mm -hmm. I'll have our people go through our entire CRM and then we'll make five, at least five offers a day. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Aaron. I love, it. I love it. Oh, yeah. But no, that's a good tip, bro. Go through your CRM 100% because they're in there for a reason. They're in there for a reason. You can go. I, I would legitimately go and I just go make five low bar stuff for sale by owners. Uh -huh. Like, I need to be here. I need to be here. I need to be here just to get some momentum going. And seeing what else I could stir up. Yeah. What else would I do? And then I would um try and get momentum in other ways, right? So 75 hard just brought momentum into my life, period. Yeah. Excuse me. To where I thought stuff was going down, 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 down. To where now, like, it feels like a lot more is just coming to me. Phone call. Here we go. What up, baby? What's good, baby? What's going on, <laughs> Dino? Hey, Dean. Got a question. What's good? You want to be on our podcast this month? Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. We didn't. We, we had. We hadn't asked. We haven't asked yet, <laughs> and we said that we were going to ask you. Let's make it official. Yeah, that's right, guys. This is t Facebook official, baby. Like a relationship. Like a relationship. <laughs> Can't go back now. So you guys make sure you tune in. Maybe next week or the following week, we're going to have Dean Rogers on here, guys. Dean, bringing hella value. Thank you, man. Let's hey, go put those man. kids back to sleep. I'm getting back in the trenches. <laughs> All righty, man. All right, man. Catch you later. All right, later. That's how you get a yes. That's how you get a yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what were we saying? Um, going through your CRM. Going right? through you're your in CRM. A, you're in a slump. You Making haven't got as any many deals. offers as possible, bro. I would go yes. just make fucking mobile offers to all your dead leads. Like, so just here's another thing going. I did. So I, I started um, with PropStream, right, how you can send uh, postcards. So what I started doing now is because what happens is I'll see them and I'll, I'll save them in the PropStream. Um, and so I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to send postcards with offers on them, right? You're already looking at it. You're already seeing the condition that it's in. You can already comp it, right, right there on the app, right there on the mobile app. So I'm sitting there. I'm confident. Got an idea what the rehab is going to be. Know what you can pay for it. And then I give them a range, bro. I'm I'm willing to offer you one hundred sixty to one hundred eighty thousand dollars. Send it on a postcard. They call you back. Great, right? You've already kind of gave them numbers, so you know it's going to be a pretty decent lead if they're already calling you back. Oh yeah. Well, and another thing you could do is, um, if I'm ever and I learned this from another my mentor, to where if you're going into a slump and you got kicked in the fucking face, mm -hmm. go spend money on something else that's going to bring more more momentum. Right. Yeah. If you're in a slump. Right. Like, OK, this happened. But, you know, what? we're funding this next deal and we're fucking going at it and we're creating momentum now. Yeah. Right. Like we're not a slave to it. Like we're we're in charge here. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep things going like, oh, no. Well, we got another business venture going here. And then you're going to bring it all from there and just keep that shit pushing. Keep that shit pushing. Keep that shit pushing. You don't like, want to start it. We just we finally got to a point where we got all all these, you know, all our probates on the on this list and stuff like that, man. And we got it mailed out because it took some time because. That's a process, a system that I'm still figuring out, right? So manually, I'm getting it back and I'm having to scan it to my VA, call magicians, scan it to my VA. He's pulling all the information off of those pages, putting it on an Excel sheet, right? Merging it all onto the, a list. And then check this out. I got one of my, um, she was my assistant when I was teaching, right? She, she did all the organization stuff for me, right? She made sure I had the copies 
all this stuff. And so I just, I got, I showed up and I just taught. So I hit her up. It was like, Hey, I'm looking to do this direct mail. You know, you willing to, you're interested in making some extra money on the side because I wanted her to personally write the name, you know, person, uh, personally write, you know, the, um, yep. The receiver the on the envelope. Right. I didn't want, I didn't want to go through a company that was going to just print it on there or get labels and get their name on it. I wanted to feel more personable. And that's what was holding me up for a long time. And so, yeah, I was able to pay her, uh, you know, a little extra money. Um, she went ahead and did up you know, like a hundred and something letters for me, stamped them, went and got stamps, <laughs> stamped them for me and threw them in the mail, bro. Got a call back today. She dropped them off Monday. I got a call today. Um, and it wasn't a hot lead, but it was, you know, for me, it was just, it was dope to get the call back. Dude called me and was like, you know, hey, I, I wanted to give you a call. Um, you called, you sent me a letter on my parents' house. Um, Unfortunately, he's like, I guess there's a fiduciary, so it's going to be hitting the market. Yeah, so it's going to be hitting the market in like three weeks or whatever. They're going to be selling it as is, but we know in this market, something's going to hit the market, <laughs> and there's going to be a lot of desperate buyers wow. that's going to, that's gonna, you know, pay an arm and a leg. But it was cool because he finished the conversation with, I told him, thank you for reaching out, and he said, no problem. He said, I felt like since you took your time to write me a letter and send me a letter, that the least that I could do is call you back. There you go. You know what I mean? So it, it wasn't a hot lead, um, but for me, it just affirmed me wanting to write the uh, the names on the envelope because it felt a little bit more personable. So that's proof well, of concept for me. Well, and doing shit personal, bro, that I found is amazing. Like the bottles we send, like mm -hmm. we, we wanted to like give that personal touch. Like now we're sending out gear that's a personal touch and like label the people. Yeah. But mm -hmm. one of my best birthday presents was a card from Adam with a cigar and a jazz beanie. And it was a handwritten dope. card saying Adam Abadji, mm -hmm. and I open it, and it was handwritten. I was like, "Bro, that's yeah. dope!" Like just the that's little dope. stuff. Slip, is little, make the older such you a get, difference, bro. the more important the more important that stuff feels. And so when you talk about direct mail marketing, a lot of people that's that's one of the oldest forms of of marketing is direct mail. And I think when you start to do it at scale. It literally just becomes a process that's automated. It's printed, right? People look at it and they're like, oh, it's junk. But when you see your name written on it, you know, in pen, you know what I mean? People people take that a, a lot more personal. And, and it, it goes to show because I sat there and got a, a call back just because they felt like that was the right thing to do since I spent my time to write that letter. And here's my man, Adam Abadjan. <laughs> my man. We still need to go get I, some stars, man. Bro, still like probably the greatest person I've met. <laughs> greatest person I've met. Um, oh, setting expectations with new employees. Mm. Bro. You so said you Bro. just had to fire someone. Yeah, we um we just fired John. I don't know if you had to work with John, but John is yeah. um we're running into a point to where he wasn't able to grow with us. He was like our first employee. Yeah. And he grew into a sales coach. And then he wasn't able to pull his weight and other people having to pick up for him. Uh -huh. And it, this is my fault for not setting proper expectations of with him of, hey, bro, this is what has to be done. This is the way it needs to be done. This is the way you talk to people. This is the way you do this. This is the way you do that. And it's my fault I had to fire this person, right? Uh -huh. Because I essentially did not train him well enough and didn't set the proper expectations for him to carry those things. Uh -huh. to where um what's it called giving your acquisitions guy or leads manager like no you need to hit these numbers you can't just like oh hey what the fuck are you doing bro you only made 20 calls today blah, 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 blah. if he doesn't know what he needs to do how's he gonna know yeah what are you, what are you doing over there mike i'm back to folks man i'm back to folks right we want to interact with people in here Keep talking about John. Don't worry about me. <laughs> I ain't interested no more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we was talking about you're in that slump, man. Making offers. Um, that was actually one thing that I had got on one of my guys about. Not got on them, but just something I wanted to reiterate. You know, when, when we when you feel like you're in a slump, go back into go back into podio, man. There's tons of uh, leads in there. There is a deal in there. There's someone that, that we haven't talked to in a while. Maybe they cussed us out three months ago. Let's call them back, man. We'll go ahead and sort the leads from the first time, from the first lead that was generated. So two years ago, we'll go back in there and we'll start touching those people again. Um, and it typically works out, man. Um, I think that's kind of where we are right now. Um, 
I wouldn't say we're in a slump. <laughs> it feels like we're in a slump, but we did close deals at the beginning of this month. We closed two fat deals at the beginning of this month. Um, but a lot of our leads right now, they're, they're long follow-ups, man. They're, uh, we got a lot of leads in the pipeline that we've been working. A lot of people that's sitting at like 95%, just waiting for them really to just pull the trigger on it. The one thing to where like if you get into this and you think you're going to make money right away, mm -hmm. like my, Mike's first lead closed like the end of last year uh yeah <laughs> yeah man yeah it's where crazy. you gotta set those expectations with yourself and i'm not saying tell yourself you're gonna be broke forever mm -hmm. but you're not just gonna get a lead and then okay like this person wants to sell and you're gonna close and you're gonna make money in two weeks if that does happen fucking awesome yeah it, it happens you know what i mean like it, it really does you know but most of the time it's from follow-up. And one thing that I will say with these follow-up leads though, especially with this market being so goddamn hot, right? Go back into those old leads because those old leads you've probably made offers on. And if you made offers on these leads a year ago, two years ago, those numbers are low as shit. Bro, and if right? like, um, you give them their number, yeah. I've done this a ton. If you And their, not, their number's still their number, bro. Like a it's, lot of people are like, this is just where I'm at. This is what I need. And the market goes up. And you're like, hey, let's make mm -hmm. something happen. And, and, and that just shows like even like, like uh, on the deal that we're working, right? Hopefully we get this thing closed next month. That's a deal we've been working on for a year and a half. Lock that thing up, man. It was it was a pretty, you know, it was a, it, it was a good deal, right? And that thing that stretched into a mega deal. Yeah, but that'll be a fat one. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? And so you may feel one. like you're in a slump, but based on because of follow up, We'll be able to freaking cash out on a deal that freaking it's gonna be ridiculous, man. It's gonna do a lot for us. All right, that'll be so cool. And you can't again lose on the follow up, or else Michael Butler gets your fat, fat, fat deal. <laughs> Extremely fat deal, yeah. right? Because someone's always there. Yep, and they and they love it, man. They you know what? You you look persistent. You know, it, it feels, you know, they build a relationship with you, calling and checking up on them. Hey, how you doing? Oh, man, we still haven't got to the point that we're looking forward to the house. Hey, I'm not even worried about the house, man. I'm calling to see what's up with you. <laughs> you know right, what I mean? Well, like, that's what they like. It here. gives you time to build rapport. And mm -hmm. that's what makes cold calling good, right? Well, what I truly think, right? Because you called this person. Mm -hmm. They, For some reason, they happen to answer your phone call, nobody else's. And then yeah. you're talking to this person for the next two years. Yeah. Well, you're talking to this person for the next six months and yep. it's only you. And then like you've built rapport over these last six months. And it's just like, okay, Hey man, what's going on? Bro. They How sent me a this? text message with comps in the area <laughs> with comps in the area saying, just wanted to send this to you. Redfin sent me an email <laughs> showing me the growth in my area. But just so you know, we're sticking to the price that we, that, that you offered us because it was a good price for us at the time. But man, you're gonna you're gonna make it out pretty good, <laughs> right? You know, and that's what happens when you're honest with people, man. And you just tell them, "Can I make a little bit more money on this?" Yes, but based off time that we've invested in all that stuff, man, they they completely they value my time that I've spent with them, problems that I've solved for them, you know, and things like that. When I didn't have to, when the deal was small, I was still there. Now that it's fat, I need you to still be there. <laughs> well, this shit will carry over as you grow in business, right? To where business is just people. Yeah. Like there is no business to business sales. It's you're talking to someone else who works for this company, but it's just you and him. And uh -huh. how much does that person like you, right? And like obviously I have to navigate some other things, but it's all just people skills, bro. People. It's all people, people, people. Mm. Um, how did you develop confidence cold calling? I had um, a mentee ask me that today. He was like, bro, how are you so comfortable cold calling? I was like, I mean, I got my face kicked in for a year and a half. <laughs> Get my face kicked in. Once you realize that, ain't, you know, fuck. It's it's nerve-wracking, man. I ain't gonna lie. I mean, you get on there. I still get on there sometimes hesitating and stuff like that. But I just got to remind myself, like, you know, this is just a conversation. This is someone that I'm looking to bring value to. You know, if that's not something that they're interested in, I'm more than okay with it. Like, please hurry up and just tell me nowhere to fuck off so I can get to the next person. And so that's really what it is. You just get your face kicked in for so long, you start realizing that, you know, at the end of the day, if they're not answering the questions that you're asking, they're not motivated enough for you to be on the phone with them. They ain't so, catching with you, bro. Just get over it. 
<laughs> like it, there's no need to be forcing people to have this conversation. Well, we'll be able, before you hang up, like nah, fucking let him go. Right. And those fuck yous are the best. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, I mean, but like you know, you don't have to waste yeah. time talking to a grandma when it's yep. 7 30 at night. You think you're putting in work trying to get some more deals. And then there's grandma sitting there talking your ear off. And instead, the dude before that said, fuck you. And then you could get your time back and go on to the next one. Bro, those are the hardest people, those older folks. Bro, it's a because tough Because they be on the phone talking it's forever. Tough. And, you know, you get stuck in your morals. You're like, I don't want to rush them off the phone. I don't want to be rude. I don't want, you know, they just looking for someone to talk to. And so, man, that shit's hard, bro. Because I'll be sitting there listening to them. My wife's like, listen to them. I'm like, they ain't talking about shit. <laughs> I knew this wasn't a deal two minutes into the phone call. Bro, you knew it wasn't a deal. What's it called? Gerald at the very <laughs> beginning, bro, was talking to people for hours. Like he told me he talked to one dude for 12 hours. Like he talked to a dude six hours one time and six hours another time, like over at his house. He's like, bud, what are you doing? Uh, I was like, you need to get that sales process dialed in, son. <laughs> the longest conversations that I've had was probably with those Lamore deals. Oh, she she the was lady a out of Texas, bro. She, she was a talker. She was a talker. She was right. a talker. It happens. Oh yeah. Or Dean's commercial comes on while you're talking to them, and then they say, "Oh, I'm gonna go with that guy. Oh, that guy. That guy. That guy. I'm gonna go. With, I'm gonna go with that guy. I'm just waiting for the time when Dean Dean's walking around, and they're like, "Hey, are you the guy off the commercial?" Oh yeah. Well, I mean, he doesn't <laughs> live up here, right? But if he's up here and just walking around, yeah. Hey, I saw your commercial. I'm gonna have to get a commercial just so I can have somebody say that to me. But that's the what's it called? Nice part about internet, like why we do this podcast, right? Because mm -hmm. it brings authority. But like when you're a guy on TV, it automatically just gives that celebrity influence. Like, oh, you have a commercial, you must be yeah. legit. Yeah. <laughs> you must be legit. Like you must have been doing this shit for years. You, to, to get a commercial, because I don't to know get a how commercial? to get on TV. Yeah, right. You're on TV, bro. You're on CBS. You came on during the game. <laughs> you got a Super Bowl commercial, right? I mean, but like that's what it, that's what people take like take it to, right? And it gives you that much authority to where they are, and even like, well, I trust this dude. He, he's on TV. I don't, well, I don't know what you're doing. Well, well, think about it, bro. Like, think about like who you got to be to start doing commercials. I mean, it's, it's not that much, but I mean, I, I ain't doing. I'll probably, do, I'll probably do it for like two months. You know. <laughs> I know some dudes <laughs> dropping some serious checks on those. I do, I do it for like two months, maybe, but you know, hopefully some come in after that. Um, what we're gonna say is the stuff about the celebrity. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm used to have him on here next week. Well, in the future, maybe next week, two weeks yeah, from now. How much do we I'm, think the commercial cost? Um, you're anywhere between that. Like, you're six k plus. Yeah, they're about six thousand a month. Six k plus a month. Mm -hmm. At least when when I ran them with Alan, we were um like between the six and ten. I have some friends who are dropping twenties. Was so Alan like, on it? Um, no. I think we should have put Alan on it. I mean, we you didn't even know. Yeah, we had just, on there. We just had some like random commercial of. Oh no. Um, do you have a shitty house with tenants? Nah, nah, nah. And like, so like it was just like, like a over, words. It was just like a voiceover. It was a voice exactly. It was a voiceover instead of Allen, having Buff Allen on there. Saying, yeah. Well, I think just having a person on there, and that's why I say it, it, what, that's what makes it dope because you know people are gonna see see Dean and they're gonna be like, oh, okay, that's a, you know it, they can relate to it. It's just like, oh, I've met him before. I've seen you somewhere. It just starts that conversation. But when it's just words, like, is that your voice? Like you know. Mm -hmm. So I think it's dope to be in the commercial. Um, and you say you got people paying twenty plus. Yeah. Um, is that just based off of it. how often it's being it's being played, or yeah. is that how often it's being channels? played? What channels it's on? What time slot it's in? Right. Uh -huh. So are you are you in? Excuse me. This kombucha is making me burp. Um, are you at like seven seven o'clock news? Right, to where uh -huh. all the old people are watching that shit. Yeah. Like, are you getting that middle slot right before the weather? Uh -huh. yeah. Right. I mean, that's an expensive slot. Yeah. Right. To where you're placing those strategically. Are you on during the middle? Of the, we tried playing with it like on during the middle of the day during Mario. I was like, nah, these motherfuckers are going to sell. If you're at home yeah. watching Mario all day, you see this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, <laughs> you need me. You need uh, me. You watch you Judge need Judy, me. Mario. I'm about, to, I'm about to offer you 60000 and you going <laughs> to jump at it, baby. 60000 Hell yeah. Well, how soon you want to sell? Tomorrow. 
I would have sold it yesterday if your commercial came on yesterday. Right. So we um but it was interesting. We didn't get that much traction off of it, but now like talking to people now and mm-hmm. the way they have it structured, I think we could have done a lot of damage. Well, there's people now who who I don't think it's necessarily that you're paying for the slots now. I think it, it may just be like they're gonna play you a couple times, you know, not a couple times throughout the day, but I think it's just random, you know, on how they do it or just, the people that you're paying to do it, they kind of already have a their system. system to it. So they you're really paying for their system. You yeah, know, so their system at that point, if you're paying for someone's system, it's already uh, proven to work. Right. And I mean, it's um, what's it called? Like having someone run your Facebook ads. You're yeah. paying that company to run your Facebook ads in the right places. Yeah. And then they ha- and then they generate all the ads. That's the best way I could put it. A hundred percent. Yeah, um, man, TV. That's dope. I don't like Facebook ads for real estate. I'm just going to let you guys know. There's people who freaking kill kill it. I, I've talked to many people. And it's many not working? People. It's not many. working? It has been tough. tough. I can see that. What's it called? Matty G dropped 50, made 55. Mm. We, mm. we dropped like three and not even like a lead. We got one lead. The rest of them were renters or people we could not get a hold of. Yeah, no, yeah. See, and I, I use, I like to use the ads more for like content, um, just spreading the word on our podcast, um, just getting it on. You know, I love, I love Instagram ads, man. I love people just being able to scroll through their feed and they see me every, every five minutes. Right. Cause just big day. Oh, let me put this in my calendar. You know, they may say, Oh, the podcast come on uh, Wednesday this week at seven o'clock. Let me put it in my calendar. But then they fucking forget because they're still fucking scrolling through Instagram. And then it pops up again. I'm like, Oh shit. That's what, that's what I like about the Instagram ads. Um, well, I mean, I think social media ads are amazing. It just depends mm-hmm. on like your target. your target. Yeah. Your target. hundred uh, percent. Your target. That's why I thought TV was freaking awesome, especially like w- what you're targeting. It's not cable. It's local channels, right? Who's watching the local channels, typically the people that can't afford their cable. Right. And if or they can't the afford older the people cable, or the older people, right. They're watching the news, watching their, their, their uh, what is it? Their novellas. <laughs> right. I think you said Steve and uh, Max and them. They they did one. Uh, Max did a commercial on this on a Spanish cha- Spanish channel. I still think Steve should have done it, but yeah. <laughs> well, 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 Max is speaking Spanish though. Yeah, Steve could do it. No. <laughs> no. You don't think it's funny? I thought it was funny. I commented no, on that. Shit. I, I, I think like, I think when it comes to the you know the the, the Mexicans, you know, it's one of those things where. Um, you know, they see their own people, man. They see it on that channel. You speaking that Spanish, that it's just trust. You know what I mean? Like, it's just. It's, it's for everything, just, though, bro. For everything. But, it's you know everything. what I'm saying? Like, I think when you, if you would have seen Steve on, on on the Spanish channel coming on after the novellas, you, you just wouldn't trust it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That's just like watching BET and this white man come on there talking about you want to sell your house. Like, bro, what? How'd you get on BET? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, no. <laughs> I feel that, bro. Um, these things. Steve O. What books? What books do you on right now, dude? Man, Are I haven't been reading books. I haven't. I haven't been reading. Um, I'm still listening to um, the uh, Zig Ziglar book. i um, in the car every once in a while. Um, I just. I, I don't talk. I haven't talked to many sellers, so it's. I try not to uh, listen to stuff that's not going to pertain to what I'm doing at the moment. Um, but when I have like you know, certain leads or I'm going to be negotiating or something like that. I like to throw on the Zig Ziglar and, and listen to just the tone and, you know, just how he sets things up. And so it definitely helps me going into those conversations. Um, and that was that, man. So I typically read as needed, if that makes any sense. If I'm feeling down, I'm listening to something a little bit, you yeah, know, motivational. Rich. You know what I mean? Yeah, I start listening to stuff like that. Um, so that that's kind of been that. I think... Uh, Kind of throw a little curveball. Started, you know, started a little diet today. Oh yeah, I did want to talk about that. Fuck yeah. What? Fuck yeah. Good for you, bro. Yeah, bro. I, I started a diet because I, I, I talk to people all the time. Like, um, when I gain weight, man, I know I'm gaining weight, but I'm not a person that can just be like, you know, hey, I'm just gonna change my eating habits right now. Like, I literally have to be to a point where I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like, fucking, like, ugh. like you know what I mean? Because then I have to get myself to to a point to where. You're fed that up. old that old football player mentality pops up, and you know, because I know I got drive, but 
the drive ain't coming when you don't feel like you need to drive. You know what I mean? Like I almost got to right, put my right. back against the wall. Got to let my belly start hanging. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, hell no. Nah. You know, you, you, you got to let yourself go. You know what I mean? I got to start feeling like that. And so um, I hit I hit up I hit up my girl, uh, Becky. Uh, she has her clean, clean eats on Instagram. Shout out clean with a K. Um, and she she used to do dietary meals for um, um, I think at the hospital. So I thought that was really cool because, you know, you have some meal uh, meal prep places where it's kind of like this is this is our menu for the week. What do you like? Whereas she sends out a, um, a email to you. You pretty much mark mark off the things that you like, the things you don't like. And you just tell her kind of what your goal is, and she, and she preps your meals for that week um, accordingly. So um, I had hit her up and was like, you know, hey, I'm, you know, I need ten meals this week. Got to get rid of this gut. And I go, I have no idea what she's gonna give me, bro. We go pick it up, and of course my wife's in the car, so you know she's gonna sell me out on everything. Uh, we go pick up the meals. She's like, hey, I had to put the bowls in the bag. They kept falling over or whatever it was, and I was like, are those salads? And she was like, yeah, you said you was ready to get rid of that gut, right? And I was like, ah, you cold for that one. She's like, there's no carbs in there. She was like, so we're just going to start you off no carbs all this week. And so I'm just like, man. Bro, are you ready to start 75 hard with me? No. Why? Because I don't want to commit to having to do two 45-minute workouts a day. I'll do them with you. No, I don't want to do that. We can hoop. I want to fucking play basketball. We can go do one-on-ones. Bro, I work out by walking. I'll go walk for 45 minutes and I'll hop on that damn Peloton for 30 minutes. I'm not playing basketball. I'm not playing flag football. I'm not I'm not doing none of that shit. <laughs> I mean, I go I go walk in the mornings. I don't count that, right? Go on a I go walk. walk. It works for me. I lost 60 pounds walking for an hour on a treadmill at GB3 all the time, bro. It dropped like crazy. I changed my diet. What's your goal? I walk. What's your I, goal I, just, I typically don't really I just kind of go until I feel like I'm looking in the mirror and I feel good about myself. I mean, that's what I did. You know what I mean? Like I I, I, I would say I want to get under 300 pounds, but fuck. I get I get to, I get to 300. I get to, I've always said I wanted to be around 250. Right? What were you in college? I was <laughs> I graduated at 262. Which, you know, at the point I felt heavy, but I ran a 474 at 262. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And so um, since in my adult life, right, I've, I've, I've gotten up to like when I got up to 300, I ended up getting down to about two, 260, 260. And then I felt like I was getting too thin. Right. So I stopped. <laughs> bro, I was losing it too fast, bro. And so then I kind of just stopped. And then I got up to like 320. And I was like, oh, shit, I ain't never weighed this much. Right. Got back down to 290. And I was like, <laughs> You know, looking down on myself, putting on some clothes, feeling myself. Um, and that's just kind of where I fluctuate, man, between 290, 290, 300. I still I got a lot of energy. I feel good, look good, looking like a full blown ass snack. So that's typically like my goal. Get to about 290, 300. Have you gotten to the point to where it's hard for you to put your socks on? Like I got there. Oh, bro, for sure. <laughs> for sure. I'm, I'm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't try don't, don't try don't try getting dressed when you get out of the shower bro i gotta sit around for a little bit bro <laughs> <laughs> that's honestly be real hard to put on when, you, when, you, when your feet is a little you know a little bro. Um, you know right out right, right after putting some lotion on or something man nah, kalani wait. had to help me put on my socks right like if my back was hurting yeah and like i didn't have a stool in the room i was like oh my god that's crazy you need a stool kalani you know what I mean? Like that's 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 all that's an all time low, bro. And, I, and once I get to points like that, I'm just like, okay, right, bro. This, bro that's what I was like, this shit's this shit's embarrassing, bro. You start putting on a shirt that you know you bought a little big, and you're like, ah, I need to get a bigger shirt. That's one thing I refuse to do. I refuse to buy bigger clothes. So that's usually that's usually when it starts. Okay, it's because I know I got clothes that from when I was big, and I'm like, okay, like this is it for me. So when I start putting on clothes like that, and I start feeling uncomfortable in them. That's when I'm just like, you fat ass. I, I refuse to go buy bigger clothes. I stop at a 4X. We have to. We're ordering your shirt from fucking America. We can't uh, order it from Mexico. Yeah, for bro, I, 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 I stop at a 4X, bro. And I only wear a 4X because not a lot of people have talls. 
So like I found a place at JC Penney's, they have a three XL tall, and those are like my perfect shirts. You need to go back to Gen X, bro. What fuck is Gen X? Go get them tall tees. You know? <laughs> I'm too thick, bro. I'm too I'm too big, bro. I'll be getting hot. You didn't be wearing those tall tees in middle school? Fuck no. I don't like the how I don't like how uh you know high the collars are. Fuck no. I hate that. That's for skinny people, bro, with no necks. <laughs> All right, I'm done. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I have some skinny posts with no necks because then it don't feel so tight, bro. I'll boy that shit feel like it's down there. I'm over here like this. Peloton real estate mastermind, make it a thing. <laughs> bro, I, I I love my Peloton, man. I just I, I haven't been on it. You I, I told you. I told <laughs> no, you. Bro, I, I'm gonna use it though. I love Bro, when when I was at my best, bro, I was I was spending three times a week. I'd go to GB three. I took the, the uh, five a.m. spin class for the hour, and I freaking that's that was my go to, bro. I'd walk I'd walk two days a week, and I'd spend three days three days a week. And I'm telling you, the shit just like if you're watching what you're eating, bro, and you hop on that damn bike. I used to do about an hour, forty five minutes to an hour, bro. That shit just drops off of you so fast. I gained ten. I think I've gained ten pounds since fucking Saturday with the amount of nonsense i've been eating like i looked in the mirror today i was like oh wow like bloated bro today i went i went to the gas station i bought gummy worms fruit roll-ups muddy buddies fruit by the foot and a couple other things bro the sugar is what it gets you yeah i mean but i'm starting 75 hard again I'm like that's why that's why like when i get fat i feel like people get like people stress the fuck out when they get fat like when i get fat i know exactly what contributed to me getting fat because i know how my body works. You know what I mean? Like, I know my belly getting big or I know I'm gaining weight because I keep getting fucking these um, freaking these coffees with the creamer and, you know what I mean, the peppermint sprinkles on the top of it with the, with the cold, the, the you know, the cold, the soft foam or whatever on the top of it. Like, I know all that shit's going straight to the gut. Bro, I'm telling you, I cut that stuff out. I can lose 20 to 30 pounds in a month and a half. Why do you want to get down to 200? What? Why not go bro, down to 200? I don't want to be skinny. But you won't be skinny. You'd be yoked. No, like, let's bro, say you I, get down to 225. You look like the rock. Bro, I get to 290 and I feel like I'm going to blow away. Be real now. Be I'm real, dead ass serious, bro. I get to be 290. Real, I get to 290, bro. And be real, out. son. I'm thin. Be real, son. I'm 6'3, bro. I can do shit like that. I'm 6'2. Yeah, you're 6'2. And you're, you weigh how much? I, I haven't weighed myself. Like, you're little as shit, bro. What are you talking about, bro? You're little. I'm not. I refuse to have someone look at me the way I look at you. Bro. <laughs> I, you know, I start feeling like I'm a safety or a DB or something. You know what I mean? I can't live the life of a DB. You ain't pretty enough. <laughs> this motherfucker. You're Wait till I get a commercial. Wait till I get a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> all right man hey thank y'all for tuning in with us blake aaron adam my other man up there that was uh my data analyst jimmy yeah my boy jimmy martha carlos make sure you guys do call uh go follow cmg services on instagram if you're looking to get some stuff uh some flips done um if you guys are on here you've seen uh, uh we facetime dean rogers right he's gonna be and with cletus. us and cletus uh, Dean is going to be uh, be on our podcast in the next two weeks or so. Um, and then, boom, to wrap it up, guys, if you're looking to comp your properties, uh, you're looking to send direct mail, analyze these properties, analyze these deals, right? Make great offers. Um, go ahead and go to mainlinecomps.com um, and get your seven day free trial. Guys, I created a whole website link to make it easy for you guys. Cause I don't have 10,000 followers on Instagram. So I can't say to go to prop stream and swipe up, you know, and get your seven day free trial. I just went ahead and created a full ass domain to make it easy for you guys to go to mainlinecomps.com and get your seven day trial. It's going to change your business. If you guys are looking for any type of virtual assistance or outsource staffing, go to callmagicians.com and I just bought followers so I could get the swipe up. So y'all yeah. be able to swipe up next week. <laughs> Yay! That's what I'm talking about. Thank you guys Thank for you tuning guys in. So much. We'll be back at our regular date next week. We'll be back on Thursday at 7 p.m. So make sure you guys like, share, 
share, share, share on your Instagrams, Facebook pages. And share again. And share again, baby. We'll see you guys next week.